When it comes to action figures we didn't get in the 80s but we wish we did, well close to the top of that list has to be the last Starfighter and we almost got him. In fact, someone did get him. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with another video. And we're going to look at the unreleased Last Starfighter action figure by Galoob. I think I said action figure. I mean, action figures. It was more than one. Now, before we start looking at the figures, let's talk about The Last Starfighter. What a great movie, an 80s classic. If you hadn't seen it, then something's wrong with you. Now, for the summer of 1983, Star Wars Return of the Jedi came out and put an end to Star Wars, or at least a long pause on Star Wars. So, studios were looking for the next big sci-fi hit of the summer. And the following summer, in 1984, Universal Pictures released The Last Starfighter. Well, it really didn't become the next Star Wars, but the movie didn't really flop either. It had a $15 million budget, and in the U.S. alone, it made $30 million. So it wasn't a huge hit on the Star Wars scale, but it wasn't a flop either. So you would think Galoob would have went ahead and released these action figures. And as the movie left theaters, it was released on VHS and appeared on HBO, where a lot of people fell in love with it that didn't see it at the movie theater. And it became what I guess they call a cult classic. It seems they call everything a cult classic nowadays. But it does have its fan base and it's a very good movie. At least a good 80's movie. But let's look back before the movie was released at the 1984 Toy Fair. There Galoob showed off prototypes for The Last Starfighter. These figures would have been a two pack. That's right you would have got two figures for the price of one. Well, I don't know what the price would have been. But you would have got two figures on a card. If they would have done single cards also... Maybe so, who knows. Now there was no ship shown off at Toy Fair either, but you can't imagine them doing this line without at least one toy ship. Around the same time, Galoo was also showing the figures off in their industry catalog. Let's take a look. This industry catalog was sent to toy buyers to let them know of exciting toys on the way. As you can see, there were 12 4-inch action figures planned. Being that this was mostly promoted in industry magazines and Toy Fair, most of us kids in the 80s didn't even know this was a plan. And we wouldn't know about it until the 90s when it would be showcased in Tomar's action figure news. But it seems the toy line was promoted and then just kind of went away. Why did they release these? I can't really find out a reason for that. I've looked around, I've asked around, no one really knows why Galoob canceled this line. A lot of people have said the movie was a failure at the box office so Galoob canceled the line. But again, I don't see that being that it made $30 million in the U.S. alone on a $15 million budget. And it seems by the time Galoob... Okay, we got some breaking news in this video here. I did reach out to Blake Wright. He wrote a book about unreleased toys. In fact, I think he's got three volumes of it. And I've done an interview with him a couple of times. He's got a toy magazine coming out, Toy Collector. Can't wait to see what that's all about. But he wrote back when I asked him, does he know why this line never got released? And this is what he had to say. He sent me a quote from Dave Galoob himself. And trust me, anybody with the last name Galoob has to know why a toy line from Galoob wasn't released. And this is what he had to say. I think mainly our decision was based on what the retail community thought about it. It was too early to really know how the film would do at the box office. Speaking generally about theatrical license, they have really only been a handful of licenses that really meant anything at retail. We would take some of the chances knowing you have to be incredible lucky for a theatrical property to have legs and to really drive a toy to retail. You can count them on one hand. Star Trek, Star Wars. I mean, there's not many theatrical properties that grow production. So in short, when they showed these off in 1984 at Toy Fair, the retailers probably didn't get excited or really care about it, so the toy company just washed their hands of it. Sadly so. But let's get back to the video. That's just my guess right there. Again, we don't really have any official word why they didn't do this toy line. But what about those prototypes last seen in 1984? No one knew what happened to them. That was until a website got an email in 2018. The website Plastallion Stallion is one of the go-to websites for vintage toys. The owner of their website, Al the Blue, got an email from someone saying they had these prototypes. I'm sure he probably thought, yeah, right, when he got the email, 
but he did email him back to get a little bit more information. It seems the guy that emailed him was friends with a guy that was into movie makeup and wanted to become a sculptor. And he went with his friends to see another movie sculptor who was friends with Phil Tipton. Who's Phil Tipton? Well, he's an Oscar winner, visual effects supervisor, and producer who did a lot of work for Star Wars, The Terminator, and many other movies. So he went with his friend to see this guy who was a friend of Phil's. I know it's a lot of he went with him, he went with that. I couldn't find a lot of names linked to this story other than Phil. So they went over to the guy's house, and in his garage, he had a bunch of stuff from his movie past. It seems that this movie sculptor had turned his back on Hollywood and had found religion and was now looking to get rid of stuff that reminded him of his movie past. So the guy that sent the email to Plast Stallions bought the six prototype Last Starfighter figures he had, plus some model kits, and a Gumby that was actually used in a movie. It seems the guy that found religion and now wanted to turn his back on his movie past and get rid of everything he owned had no problem making money off that movie past. So the guy that sent the email to Plast Stallion wanted to see what the market was for these, if there was a demand for them, or if anybody wanted them. Now, I don't know why he didn't keep them for himself. After all, he did buy them, but maybe he was trying to make a profit, or maybe he was just trying to give them to someone that would care more for him than he would. So the Plaid Stallion website ran the article about the prototypes being found that hadn't been seen since 1984. And as you can imagine, the collector community was a buzz. People wanted to see these prototypes, and people wanted to buy these prototypes. Some was offering to buy with just one figure from the set, while others wanted to buy the whole set. But the guy who owned them, he didn't want to break up the set unless he had to. That's when he made a deal with Mike, the owner of Batcave Comics and Toys in Santa Rosa, California. And I'm proud to say, those prototypes are on display at his comic book store today. You can walk into his store and take a close look at the last Starfighter prototype action figures proudly on display. And you can even scratch your head and think, huh, it looks like some of the body used for these prototypes was taken from a Sergeant Rock Remco action figure. It's really great that someone was able to buy these last Starfighter action figures and keep them together as a set. Instead of breaking them up with well, one collector's got one, another collector's got another. But there were 12 prototypes all together and it seems the other ones hadn't been found. They are sadly probably lost forever, but who knows? We thought these were lost forever for almost 30 years or more. So you never know what's really out there. But that's a look at those last Starfighter figures we almost got, and one guy does have today. Let me know in the comments section below, what did you think about these? Would you have bought last Starfighter action figures and spaceships if they released them back in the 80s? To be honest with you, 1984 was when I was starting to slowly get out of action figures, at least for a few years, so I probably wouldn't have got them. But they would have been pretty cool to pick up in the 90s when I got back into buying action figures. Well, let me know that and more in the comments below. And as always, thumb up if you like my content, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.